my friends and I made this for you. I've always felt wrapped in a blanket of safety here in my grandmother's home, nestled on its own little plot on the north side, filled with photos of family members whose traits I recognize on my own face. When I think about my roots and about safety, I always come back to here, to my family and to my community. They're my grounding force. My mom and dad was born and raised here in St. Louis, Missouri. I was born and raised here in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm Janice. <laughs> And that's my husband, Jerry, over there, Jerry Jarnigas. And this is my first grandbaby, Kamara. Mom's mom lived up the street on Magazine further down. And every summer, we would go to Dunbar Playground and play there, and cousins were there. And it was just, just safety with numbers, I guess, and people who loved us all. My grandma actually sent me to the library. Do you remember this? Yeah. She sent me to the library, the one on all of downtown, to go look up. She's like, go find out about our family. I went and just searched as, as far back as I could go. And as far back as I could go was still St. Louis. I'm so deeply rooted to this city. I'm so deeply rooted to this community. Having grown up in St. Louis and having my grandparents inform the way I look at the city, I see it that same way where it's just, you know, if you love a place, it, to love something is to invest your time. Love isn't a word, it's, it's an action. Instead of abandoning it and when you're making the money and going and leaving and then looking back and just shaking your head, no, stay, bring and keep your resources there. You can make it. Even though my roots run deep here, I have complex feelings about living and creating in St. Louis. I'm pushed and pulled by forces that draw me home and voices that say, something needs to change and make living here sustainable. I know I'm not the only artist who feels this way in St. Louis. I'm not leaving anytime soon. <laughs> my name is BM Blythe Corona. Um, I'm an artist. I work and live in St. Louis. I'm from St. Louis. And I've lived in St. Louis pretty much my whole life. I think that with all the money that we have in St. Louis, especially for art, there's no reason why we don't have a 911 service for mental health care, for people who need food, for people who need rides to safe places. 911 is not a solution to anything because when you call 911, you don't get what you need. They send the cops first. Um, me and my friends were on a street corner. We were children, visibly children. Uh, and the cops, somebody called the cops on us and they showed up and started macing us immediately. No questions, no sirens, nothing. Pulled up, before the wheel stopped, somebody jumped out and started macing us. And at first, we didn't understand what was happening because the wind blew the mace back at the cops and they ran through the mace cloud and then maced us again. Why? Why? If whoever called the cops, if they had taken a moment to just think and be like, where are these kids' parents? Like, let me see if I can find their mama. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense to ever call the cops on a child. If people had ways to contact community members or families before resorting to the cops, I think the world would be so much better, so much better. Whenever I feel overwhelmed, I'm comforted by the activists, organizers, and everyday people who believe we can transform our region. Protect black women, protect black women at all times. At all times. Protect black women, protect black women at all times. At all times. Protect our babies. Protect our babies at all times. At all times. Protect our babies. Protect our babies at all times. At all times. Ronnie and Meme and Tracy Stanton are power builder organizers at Freedom Community Center, or FCC, a Black-led organization in North St. Louis City that fights to end mass incarceration and advocates for transformative justice approaches to reducing harm. They're building power to create community-based solutions for public safety. My name is Ronnie Amin, and I have been in St. Louis since 1990 and I currently live on the South Side. My name is Tracy Stanton. I have uh, been in St. Louis all my life. Um, I currently live on the South Side in the 10th Ward, but I grew up all over um, St. Louis City. 
When, when I think of 911, when I think of calling uh, the police, um, I just think of my experiences as a child and growing up. Um, that was just not really the thing to do because of the police overreaction. Black people are 2.5 times more likely to experience violence or be victims of violence, and 42% of the people don't call the police. Um, so that just goes to show you right there that people are, do not trust um, calling the police. Majority of the times that you are the one that call, you are on the receiving end of harm and violence after that comes, you are criminalized for even making a call. And so what happens when you call the police on someone that is in active addiction? They get in the carceral system, right? They don't go to a treatment center. They don't, they do not address like what, never ask what's wrong. Why are you out here? Do you have family? Do you have support? What do you need? Those questions aren't asked when it comes to individuals that have interactions with the system. Like I said, it's reactionary. It's, it's take you away, put you away, and then we don't have to deal with you. And so that way you never address what leads the individual to, to make the choices that they make. If the people or the powers that be really had an interest about the safety of our community, it would show in the investment so we have a structure that is overworked. Um, we don't have enough call responders. Um, that is apparent. Um, and they are under, underpaid and underappreciated, right? But that shows that there's a, a dismissal of their humanity and the humanity of the community. Because if people really felt that this was an important thing, then it would show in the investment. I will always be rooted here in St. Louis, where my grandmother taught me that safety means community with its arms wrapped tightly around me. That's why I believe that it's time for St. Louis to join national movements towards community-based safety responses. So I asked David Dwight IV and Karishma Furtado at Forward Through Ferguson about why transforming 911 is a major step towards reimagining public safety. 911 tends to be um, neglected and, and written off an afterthought to a lot of people, but in so many ways it is the primary entry point into the full public safety uh, machinery of, of our society. So we want people to become more aware of that. We want us want people to recognize how uh, there are some deeply embedded problems in 911 that are symptomatic of those same problems in our public safety system. And if we want to transform public safely, safety in general, we've got to um, start with 911 both not serving residents who often get armed police when they have other needs, including mental health needs, um, and then it's not serving the law enforcement that are put in situations that they're just not trained for and don't have the tools to help. And then there's the dispatchers in the middle who, um, one of the statistics from the report that really got me is like 30% of dispatchers in one survey um, had some kind of like post-traumatic stress or trauma. Um, they're underpaid, they're not given resources, it's in this fragmented system. And so, you know, those people that are, that are, you know, volunteering and raising their hand to be part of essential systems like 911 are also not being served. You, you want to be able to rely on the safety net that's supposed to be there to, to catch you. And the fact that for so many in our community, it is a foregone conclusion that 911 in the police infrastructure that they represent and they will bring into the equation can't be trusted is deeply problematic. It's heartbreaking on an individual level and something that we have to address to thrive as a city, as a region. I believe that we keep us safe. And I hope that by transforming 911, we can reimagine public safety in my hometown for the elders and for the babies, the artists and the dreamers, the organizers and the everyday people, for you and for me. Transforming 911 is a community accountability and advocacy tool from Forward Through Ferguson that examines the 911 landscape in the St. Louis region and serves as a call to reimagine public safety. To learn more and to get involved, visit transforming911.org.